Well, this is going to be an awfully strange video if it ever gets publicized. I really feel like this is something that's important for me to do going forward and uh, probably one of the most challenging things I have done and one of the hardest things to do um, and to talk about having done. I feel this is a necessary thing I'm going to talk about in this video. I've written down a lot of things that I want to say in no particular order to make sure that I say them and say them with clarity and with thoughtfulness. Um, I don't know what to call this video and I really don't like doing this because it may seem rather strange for someone who's spent six years of his life standing on street corners preaching to passers-by who don't want to listen to what they're saying. But I really don't like doing things that other people don't like. I don't like conflict. I don't like speaking things that people don't like to hear. But um, anyways, here goes. Um, bad video quality and all. I want to talk about today why I must, why I feel like I must publicly leave the so-called Brethren Assemblies um, without seeking to do any unhelpful bashing of people or of the Lord's Church or people who have sincere intentions and hearts and a desire to love God the way they understand. Um, if you don't know what the Brethren Assemblies are, um, feel free to ignore the whole rest of this video. It may be very confusing for you, but for those who are watching who are involved or have been involved or are thinking about becoming involved in them, I want to share a number of things. Um, I'm going to basically read them off of my phone and comment on them as I go. So I wrote this letter to myself so I would not ramble in this video and make it an hour-long video that nobody wants to watch. Why publicly? For me, um, I publicly supported and promoted the Brethren Assemblies um, as a very biblical option, perhaps even the most biblical option for a church for the last seven years of my life. Not by coercion, but because I believed it to be the best thing to do. And because I believed the Lord could work in and through the movement despite its flaws. Also, I'm seeking to help begin a new, truly non-denominational gathering that will not take names and that will promote unity instead of division and will focus on a true and honest community and fellowship with God and others in an organic, non-institutional way, without buildings, without membership lists, and without rejecting those who Jesus receives. Um, I spent a long time, for me a long time, I'm only 26 years old, um, serving the Lord through Brethren Assemblies. And this is extremely challenging because there's so many people who I know are deeply invested in my life and in the choices I make and the things I choose to believe and to do and feel called to do by the Lord. And um, I genuinely don't want people to be hurt or to feel betrayed. I honestly walked before the Lord the best I knew how and the best I understood from his word um, within reason, as in that I, I failed, but I aimed towards the goal I believed I should aim towards. And there's no kind of secrecy of me trying to gain some kind of secret following and then take off and take people away from things that they believe are good. Um, this is not out of malice and it's definitely not out of ignorance. Um, if you're going to try and, this is one thing I would ask if you're going to watch through this video, don't, don't respond to me with a Bible verse or two or tell me how I don't understand something. Um, I'm not doing this through ignorance, I'm doing it through knowledge. 
I have experienced and believed probably most of the things that people in assemblies experience or believe and believed them as passionately and promoted them as passionately as most anyone in the assemblies has promoted them that I know of. And um, in good or bad ways, um, however you see that, it's not because I don't understand your beliefs or your arguments or your doctrine that I no longer wish to be associated with or to publicly promote the assemblies. I don't believe it's possible for me to build something healthy um, with the help of the Lord without purposefully distancing myself from that which I now believe to be unhealthy and not based on a proper understanding of scripture. This is not anything I plan to do for a long time secretly, and I'm not running away from people. I'm not afraid of brethren people. I'm not afraid of talking to them. I'm not afraid of being at their churches, though I don't spend a lot of time at their churches anymore. Um, I'm not running away from authority as they proclaim themselves to be at times. Um, I'm not afraid of hard work. I'm not afraid of hours and years of praying for revival. And I'm not afraid of everyone on the planet thinking I'm crazy. I'm not afraid of being in trouble because people think I'm in a cult because I believe the Bible. Um, if it's what Jesus clearly says to do. My allegiance is still to Jesus Christ. Um, he is worthy of that, and he has deserved that in my life, in my opinion. And um, I'm not afraid of being ridiculed or of being popular or of being banished by every person that has ever known or supported me. I'm also not afraid of changing my mind again. Um, I'm totally happy to go with open with an open mind and to come back and tell people that I was wrong and I didn't understand things properly and I need to come back and see things the way that the New Testament Christian assemblies do um, as they so call themselves but um, I have come to what I believe are reasonable conclusions and have yet to have anyone willing to show me how I'm wrong in fact, there are plenty of people who would never publicly give their names to anything like this, who have talked about these exact same issues and problems I'm going to talk about, but not publicly. People who are well respected in the Brethren movement, who I will not name, who see a lot of the same things that I see, and tons and tons of people who leave and have left, who see the same things I see, but have not given public um, status to them. I don't care if I become some kind of respected spiritual leader or start something wonderful from the Lord or if I simply get to become more like Jesus to whoever I can be, wherever I can be, for however long I exist on this earth. I just wanted that to be clear where I stand. I'm not running away from Jesus. Um, Though I don't think we should treat people poorly who do run away from Jesus. I don't think he treated them poorly. Um, the list of things I better get at before this gets too long. One, the Brethren movement began as one of unity and one of reaching people with the gospel through speaking and living truth in radical ways. Today, they are one of the most fragmented and divisive groups that exist within Christendom. I do not say this lightly as someone who lived and breathed the movement for seven years as an adult. It's a fact, not 100% unanimous, but it's a true fact nonetheless. There's a claim to be non-denominational, and yet though there is no earthly headquarters in the Brethren Assemblies, they do have a hierarchical system that self-replicates to weed out all those who disagree with anything in the system thereby becoming more denominationally distinct than any other denominations, which many of the brethren speak poorly about because they have earthly headquarters, etc. This is going to sound a little bit more just of an attack. I'll read it, but this is not worded the best. Um, 
Many people in the brethren today live luxurious lives, which is not a sin, but without any apparent concern for eternity. This goes all the way up to the leadership. There is an extremely small portion of people among them who I would ever want to make my life look like as a follower of Jesus. See, the problem with this is I'm wanting to bring people to come to know the Lord and to be discipled. And I don't want to bring them to people who I don't want my life to look like. Um, or who I don't think look like Jesus. They're, they strive for doctrinal unity instead of practical unity. And generally seem to believe that unity means agreement. I shouldn't have to explain the immense harm this can cause to the experience of those who seek to follow the Lord within this system. The main reason I join myself with these brothers and sisters in the Lord is because of their emphasis on non-denominationalism. And somehow I never noticed that they have books filled with writings about the ways they are different. And this is not a joke or an exaggeration. But even better than all other Christians who don't do exactly as they do. Most of the people within the Brethren Assemblies do believe that they are better than all the other Christians in the world. Now, this is somewhat of a smear in a sense in that um, basically everyone that believes something, they believe it because they think it's right and it's better. And if they didn't, they wouldn't do it. But there's a difference between thinking you're right about something and believing that you having everything right makes you a morally better person than someone else. Um, and that's the sense you get, the sense I have gotten from being involved in the assemblies. And it's a weird undertone because people are incredibly loving and incredibly generous and they talk about the gospel all the time. And um, they, they're they not cruel to people in any visible outward ways very often. And a lot of them are extremely sincere people who do love the Lord. And I don't want to miss that. So just please bear that in mind if this sounds like an attack. I, I love a lot of the people within the Brethren and um, very, very deeply. A lot of my family is still deeply involved with them. And I don't think that everyone in them is wrong or bad or that anyone should just take off from the Brethren because I have. I have listened to people and their experiences, this is number two out of 15, and stopped invalidating them with my own, realizing that I am basically in the most privileged group of Brethren people. Being a male, being young, and being fairly decently intelligent or eloquent, at least enough to say things, being a traveling speaker and a gospel worker and only seeing the best everyone has to offer instead of their real experiences. So basically, I understand that my experience of the Brethren Assemblies is different than a lot of other people's experience of them because I've been a traveling gospel worker and preacher and kind of known in their circles and I get treated like a king wherever I go. But that's not necessarily true for anyone who is not a male or who is not in the special group in the Brethren that is very respected and treated well. Third, this is going to sound bad again, um, I don't believe God is going to revive this movement. That sounds silly. I don't know what God's going to do. Um, I've been praying for the Lord to revive his people for the last seven years fairly intensely. But uh, this is just my personal belief. Um, I, I hope it's not right. It would be awesome if God did, but and I do think God will revive his church and he'll bring people to life continually, but the movement particularly that people are seeking to see revived in a sense, it's, uh, I don't think God's going to revive it. There have been people far more spiritual and far more dedicated than me who for the last hundred years or so have sought to get back to what the early brethren had with the Lord and have failed only bringing about superficial results or in small pockets in different places. I don't believe God honors pride, especially the intellectual sort. A lot of this is going to hurt if you're actually going to listen to it and think about it. But this group is filled with it, including me. 
I had my eyes open to how arrogant it is. To think that throughout all of Christian history, if anyone got things right, it is us. And anyone who disagrees with us about even the smallest thing must be lacking in intelligence or spirituality to be willing to disagree with us. This is the mindset among the assemblies. Some of them have moved away from it a little bit, but it is the mindset among them across the board, like 80 to 90 percent. Um, God opposes the proud. And the brethren are so twisted up in layers and layers of pride that I don't believe it can be undone. That's a hard thing to say for me. Um, I don't like saying things that sound bad. But sometimes the Lord wants us to do things like that. And I do think speaking truth is important. And uh, I do think this is important to, to talk about. I've come to see the brethren, this is number four, as an institutional, scheduled, orderly organization which is fine if that's what you want. That's what I had hoped to escape when I left more institutional groups of churches to pursue what I believed was a spirit-led gathering of Christians. Far too often, spirit-led is a synonym for a leader scheduled. Not that the two can never coincide with each other, but this is a big picture thing for me, is that I don't see the church as an institution. I see it as a part of daily life, a spiritual reality, a thing that's expressed on a local level, in different ways but not not like that not as an institution with a hierarchical leadership of people and a building and these business-like meetings that happen once or twice a week two or three times for the spiritual ones of us um, five it's simply too much baggage to carry when introducing people to Jesus this is a really important thing to me my heart has always been for the gospel and for seeing people come to know Jesus themselves and to grow at their own pace the way the Holy Spirit leads them. And uh, I can't bring people into something like this. In fact, um, there are very well-known people within the Brethren, who I will not name once again, who told me when I thought they were wrong um, that they would never bring someone into an assembly until they've been, until they have personally discipled them for three to six months because of how bad it is for their spiritual growth. Um, if that doesn't speak volumes, I don't know what will. Um, six, lack of honesty, true fellowship, authentic testimonies, etc. There's such a wooden Victorian feel to everything. And people in leadership seem blind to any need for anything more than a superficial change here and there. There needs to be a whole change of mindset in my opinion. And the closest thing you'll see is them arguing about allowing people to use pianos or to use guitars or something. And that's just so far off from where the real issues lie that I think, yeah, it's not something I want to spend my entire life battling people over silly things when there should be more important things being dealt with. I want my life to matter for eternity, number seven, and to do what I believe Jesus wants me to do. I believe it's more honoring to him to gather in small groups of Christians and see the Lord save and grow people to be like Jesus through living life as an every moment sacred type of thing. Letting Jesus be the head of the church, which the brethren claim to allow. And yet, apparently, Jesus wants every single church everywhere to look almost exactly the same as it did in mid-1800s England. <sighs> The system as a whole, number eight, this is important too to me, is set up to perpetuate abuse. This is hard too. Like I said, there's a lot of people that live within the system that do well. They're not abusive. They're not trying to destroy people's lives. It's not what I'm saying. The system is set up to perpetuate abuse, spiritual, emotional, even physical and sexual. There are far too many doctrines that have infiltrated the movement that have become unquestionable such as um, Bill Gothard doctrine, the so-called authority that elders have and our understanding of the word authority and what it means. I don't have time to go into that today, but basically the idea that elders can tell you what God wants to say to you. The verses here and there get taken out of context and applied unquestioningly without any concern for cultural or even scriptural context. 
I, I've experienced this numerous times um, in lots of different places where you try and have discussions with people about stuff and they don't really actually listen to you or hear you. They just want you to bow down to their interpretation of the Bible based on one or two verses because they're the elders and they know how to interpret the verse. The problem with this is if you actually believe this, you need to go back to the Catholic Church or to the Eastern Orthodox Church or something like that. Because the brethren do not claim to trace their heritage back to Peter. They don't claim to be people who believe in human leaders that represent Jesus. Um, and yet they believe an elder has authority. But if I were to start a church tomorrow, I would have the same level of authority as they do. And uh, this is a problem for me, as in who do they answer to that I don't already answer to? I don't know if that makes sense, but if they are this supposed authority, they just become that because they're appointed there, that by men or recognized as that by men. And um, there's no guarantee of any kind of spiritual maturity or leadership on their part to merit that, although often there is. Let me see. I digress. The Bible only counseling method has become a part of most assemblies and constantly minor doctrines are made out to be major and things to split apart over. Unity is really, really important to me. It's important to Jesus. And I don't feel like I can actually be unified with people in the brethren unless I'm outside of the brethren. Because if I'm unified with people in the brethren, there's a continual pressure for me to be separated from everyone else that Jesus receives. And, uh, and to continue believing all the things the brethren believe. And that's not what unity is. See, once I leave officially the brethren, I can still be in fellowship and in unity with people in them. But I don't have that pressure constantly to reject certain people and to reject certain ways of thinking just because they disagree with what some people and their brethren may agree with. Nine, there's a continual attempt to go back in time instead of applying the scripture to our world today. I, I wrote here misogyny, patriarchalism, sexism, etc. Those are all super long conversations. I'm not getting into that. Um, everyone who is in the system and is doing well seems to be doing well in spite of the system in that they're giving to it more than getting from it. Um, their, their energy is taken from them when they go to meet with other Christians in the assembly. And they have to recharge from that very often by spending time with the Lord on their own. I don't think that's how the church should be. Um, I don't believe it's a more godly option to wait and pray for God to change people who have, in my opinion, real choices. Oh, we're not talking about Calvinism today either. But they can make a choice to be proud or to be humble. And people have shown themselves to be proud. Um, I don't believe we just wait indefinitely and pray for God to change them. And, uh, yeah, that's simple. There's usually no desire or understanding of the need to grow, to listen, to learn, just a continual repeating of things that everyone already agrees with. It makes it feel kind of monotonous at times um, when I know everything people are going to say before they say it. 10. I cannot be the change in the system as it claims to not be a system and has no one that determines its rules from the top down, though it is nonetheless a system. So basically, this is what I tried to do for the last seven years is I really believed if I just be faithful and join this group of people who believes the Bible and takes it seriously, um, I can kind of ignore everything else and the Lord will just change people. Um, but the thing is, because every assembly is autonomous, it actually makes it kind of a double-edged sword that's impossible to really change as a person. Um, it's autonomous and yet it's denominational because everything is held the same and people kind of all keep each other in check and they all write books to each other and about all the things they agree with and they only listen in general to the things they already agree with. There's a number of notable exceptions to this and I'm not saying this as a 100% of the time thing. But it is a general rule that um, brethren are, the brethren are very unaware of other people's actual arguments and actual points because they don't listen to them. They just listen to 
things they already agree with. Okay, I'm going to get this before it's a half an hour long. 11. I've come to a different theological understanding than that I need older men in authority positions in the institutional church to validate what I feel the Lord calls me to do. Um, I've also come to different opinions about other things to do with men and women in the church and in the home and stuff. and Things I will obviously be developing at a later point in time. I love to be able to share things with people, but I felt like I needed to get this off my chest first and kind of make publicly known what is really true about me and where I stand so that people can listen to me from the point of where I am instead of thinking I'm somewhere within the assemblies being rebellious to all my elders. Um, 12. I think there needs to be some kind of information out there, some kind of resources out there for people who are leaving the Brethren or thinking about it or who are seeing issues in the Brethren to access and know that not every single good Christian is a Brethren. Um, I, don't, I haven't seen any resources really for people who are leaving the Brethren because a lot of people when they leave, they leave silently. And this is why this is hard for me to do is I'm not leaving silently. Um, because the reality is the Brethren Assemblies are a very tight knit group. They're very much like a family. They've succeeded in a lot of things in terms of hospitality and generosity and loving each other. Um, but it's a very inward focused love towards people that are in the same group who think the same way. And so you can really get ostracized if you talk about it. And a lot of people, when they leave, their families are still involved in it. And there's just almost no resources that I've seen that talk about the New Testament assemblies. They're a pretty obscure group in some ways, even though a lot of our theology in the church today has been affected by some of the early brethren who were incredibly smart and gifted and spiritual men. And there's some really spiritual, amazing people in the Brethren today as well. Um, don't discount that. I'm not trying to speak about that, but people leave, people see issues, they never talk about them. Well, here I am. I'm talking about them. Um, you can throw whatever you want at me. Um, I feel like somebody needs to. 13. I just want to love Jesus and love his people. Right now, for all the fallout this will bring, I can do that best while not being a part of a system made by men. I want to promote unity and growth in the Church of Jesus Christ, and I want to be humble, loving, and truthful. Also, it's a really nice benefit that I can say what I believe the Lord wants me to without fearing the repercussions from whoever my so-called spiritual authority is at the time. I can answer to Jesus and to his people who are willing to speak on his behalf to me. That's really important for me, too. There was such a balancing act for me all the time of trying to appease people's definitions and understandings of different words of, and making sure that no one thought I wasn't doing, I was doing something the elders didn't want me to do. And it's really, really ridiculous um, in a, on a human level. And it's not even scriptural. Um, if you take the time to look through the scriptures, their idea, their understanding of human authority is, in my opinion, very flawed. We're not going to get into that today. But Lastly, this is the last thing I wrote down to say. Basically, I'm embarking on a new journey. I'll probably be unpopular with people in Reformed circles because I'm not a Calvinist. Um, I'll probably be unpopular in my own circles that I've established great relationships in for the last seven years because I'm no longer with them. And in our circles, it's very important to be with. You're either with or against. I, I can't handle that mindset. I can't handle rejecting people that Jesus receives and loves. Um, and it will make me unpopular in the world. I don't think the world system has ever approved of Jesus as a whole, of his teachings as a whole. Um, I don't believe it ever really has, and I don't believe it ever really will, though the people of the world at different points in history will will sometimes turn to the Lord en masse. Or I don't believe it's the thing that makes you popular. And uh, usually when people are saying things that Jesus wants them to say, very often it's not till a generation or two later when they're recognized for it. Um, it doesn't mean Though, that we can't be as kind and compassionate and understanding as we can be and actually listen to people instead of dismissing them while we're on our way to going to be with Jesus. 
See, if we really know the Lord and we're so concerned about all these evil people in the world who don't know the Lord, the best thing we really can do is listen to them so we can understand them, not listen to them so we can tell them why they're wrong. People generally will listen to you better once you actually understand what they're saying. Um, I'm also hoping this video will help people um, that seem to all believe they need to fix everything I think or say on social media whenever I say anything, that they can just relax a little bit because I'm no longer representing the assemblies. I'm sorry to anyone I have let down. Um, I genuinely am sorry to anyone who feels hurt or betrayed by this. Um, there are people who have invested into me a lot from the assemblies. And um, I don't believe they should be offended by this if they were genuinely investing into me because they want to invest into the work of God. Um, I don't feel like I wasted my time in the assemblies. I feel like I invested into people. And if they're walking with the Lord better today than they were when I first met them and it has anything to do with me, then praise the Lord. Um, I'm really happy about that. And hopefully, if I'm walking closer to the Lord than I was when you first met me and you had something to do with that, you can appreciate that and rejoice in that. So, yeah, I love a lot of you in the assemblies. Uh, I love all of you. And I do also have a deep, loving relationship with a number of people in the assemblies who may be very offended by this to different degrees, but. I can't do the inward focused thing anymore. We're praying for us, but not the Church of Jesus and not the world. And yeah, I better stop. I'll start ranting. That's why I wrote those things down. There's many more things I could say, many more details I could go into. Feel free to ask me questions, to comment, to reach out to me, um, to talk to me. I'm open to hearing stuff, I'm open to learning stuff, but don't just send me a Bible verse or two that you think will magically change my mind about something because I assure you I have heard it and read it and preached on it and probably understand your point of view. Just give me the benefit of the doubt on that. I love you guys and I love the Lord and I hope you can love the Lord and you can love me. And uh, yeah, I'm thankful for every part, every person in the assemblies that shows the Lord Jesus to other people. And it's a healthy part of the Church of Jesus. And I do pray this will have some sort of effect on helping people to see how we can grow together as a church, as the one true church, every Christian who knows Jesus as their savior. And that we can cross more of these lines we've drawn in the sand for ourselves that Jesus didn't put there. Lord bless and Thanks for watching.